Try that one more. Hey, there Bill. I can see him. Hi, Brian. You got your you got your Cracker Jack like tech team there with you? Yeah, they're just leaving me alone. Closing the door like you're on your own. You got to do the you see the, hand, all you by see the hand wave. The hand wave was okay. Get out. You're good. Thanks. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Thanks for. I was just doing a little bio about you being a second generation candy maker in in Western Pennsylvania. How about that, huh? So, but. Here, like I've got, I've got a famous box behind me. By the way, there you go. I see there's some missing out of there too. They were breakfast yesterday morning. Uh, okay, that's a good breakfast. Well, I mean, there's milk. There's like, it, it's like a bowl of cereal. It's got all the food groups that you want. Exactly. Um, so, I know. So I asked you to do this months ago, and you told me later because yes. it's not like your gig. This is not your favorite place to be. I know. No, but it's it's fine for you. I'd do anything for you. You know that. And and I say the same thing about you. Like, I think you've forgotten more about chocolate and candy making than I'll ever know. I think that's really the way it is. Well, I don't know, but you know what? I miss. Yeah, you know, I'm stuck in an office all the time, but I miss getting in the kitchen. And every time I've come up to visit your place, and I see your. I call it my fantasy kitchen, okay? I want to just sit in. I just want to get my hands dirty and get in there and start doing some things. Well, you are always that. welcome to come. I think, you know, what's interesting is we met at a club. Like, we'd met before because you're, full disclosure, Bill is really good friends with Tom Rick. He's really good friends with Tim Phil, our owner. And um, we'd met, at, like, in passing at some point, but then you and I ended up at a class at the French yes. Pastry School. Correct. I think that's the, so you used to have your hands in chocolate. You were I did. I said I missed that. And by the way, at that French pastry school, you were the number one. You, all the products that you made were like perfect. I, I screwed mine up. I blended that uh, almond paste too much. Mine separated. <laughs> I always remember that. I was really ticked off because the, we had a partner there, and the partner said, no, he said seven minutes. <laughs> He said seven minutes. But. Yeah, that class was taught, I think, by John Krause. And John, it's like somebody bailed on the class at the last minute and like, Brian, you're working by yourself. I'm like, yes, exactly. What? And then he added recipes. He's like, you can do three. You're good. You got he this. Did. He, he called me after the class. Uh oh, I'm losing you. Did I still? There you you're go. You're still here. He, okay. He called me after the class back home and said, hey, I need a peanut brittle recipe. Well, you know, my peanut brittle recipe is, you know, 100 pounds, 100 pounds at a time. I didn't have a little tabletop one, but he was a good guy. That was John. Is, John, yeah, John has a bakery now up in Minnesota that um, I think really? they've been around like 10 years. So they were celebrating 10th, their 10th anniversary or something recently. So I've always wondered where he went. Yeah. that And that school's not around anymore, is it? Uh, I, I, they still... There's something. I don't... I. COVID, They're not the French pastry school anymore, I don't think. COVID's messed with everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I, I don't know what to say. It's been crazy for us. You know, because anyway, we stayed so, open. We were, right. able, we, were, we were able to continue to operate because we were supplying product to grocery stores, the, right. the so-called essential places. So that kept us busy and, you know, having employees and finding employees was the toughest part. Yeah, I mean, that's been sort of the, what everybody said, right? I mean, our economy has kind of moved now, too, that people seem to want to do other things. You know, the restaurant business, I guess, they're the ones, you know, where did everybody go? Okay, where did the bartenders go? Where did the, uh, the uh, waiters and waitresses and things like that that aren't, aren't coming back? It's not the... Uh, I don't. It, it's not the unemployment of compensation that they're getting. I I don't think so. I just think they moved on. Yeah, there was an article in the Buffalo News yesterday about. Um, it might have been this morning. I don't know. All days are kind of one these days. Um, about hospitality in Niagara Falls, right, which is 15 minutes up the road, and the hotels are as full as they were in 2019, but they don't have any employees. Right, so the, the expectations of the consumer is, I'm here, I want the same services, but they don't have anybody. No, it's surprising. It's surprising to me is you'll go in a restaurant and they're, you know, it's packed, but you'll see 
four or five, six empty tables and they're not seating anybody there. Yeah. And I said, well, can't we sit? And said, no, we don't have anybody to wait on you. Right. So they can't, you know, so they're losing that right there, four or five tables, two turns a night. That's a lot of, that's a lot of income that they're losing and a lot of tips and money that, uh, that somebody's not getting. Yeah. Right. But yeah. So let's talk about chocolate. I said you were a second generation chocolate maker. So, and your dad started Sarah's Candies, but he didn't start, I guess, in a somewhat traditional way. He did. Started in his basement making candy. You know, you know back then, back then, and it was Cannonsburg, there were at least a half a dozen candy stores. Right. All in different, you know, different parts of the town. And the town's not that big, 10,000, 11,000 people. But it was on a corner. One was one was by our junior high school, so you'd go to you know school, and then you'd after school you'd go to the candy store and go eat some. The one guy was famous for coconut clusters, okay. One guy was famous for peanut clusters. One guy was had a little ice cream parlor as well as candy. So each one had its own, just like anything else. And they and they lived and they survived, and they sent their kids to college, and they didn't want any of their kids to be in the candy business. And none of them were, except except me. But what 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 was your dad's real gig before before making chocolate? Okay. He worked at RCA, forklift driver, you know, warehouse guy. But he was a great salesman, you know. And he went home and made some chocolates, practiced, tried to work, you know, went and worked for a couple of candy makers at night. And just kind of went on his own and says, you know what, I can try this. I'm going to do this. And uh, then he started selling it to his fellow employees at RCA. There was a lot of employees at that time. They made the records. You know, that was when they were you know, making 45. Records? For, what's records. a 40, 45? 45. What's a 45? Uh, yeah, you buy exactly. 45 of them? Like, no. <laughs> yeah. You know what 45 is. The ones with the bigger hole in the middle. <laughs> the singles. Uh, but yeah, and then eventually, I think the boss at RCA says, "Hey, you got to make a decision: either go make candy or come here." But you can't keep doing what you're doing. And he left. Much so, to your mom's chagrin, probably at that point. My mom worked too. She was a, uh, a, a so-called assistant to the owner of a place called San Tony's, and it was a salvage place. So they would go out and buy, it was just like um, like Gabe's or something like that. They'd buy salvage trains, stuff on trains, box cars, bring it in, and they had everything there. So she worked there for a long time until they closed, you know, until they closed. 17 years, I think, she worked there. So, you know, they worked. The good thing about the candy business back then was all the candy makers closed in the summertime. You know, they weren't opening their stores. Or nobody, so, you know, me and my dad, all we did was, we were off all summer. We golfed. It was a great, it was a great gig till we opened up a so-called real store, not in the basement, but uh, knocked down our house. We knocked down our house to build the store. And it was 30 feet, 30 feet wide by 100. And that contained, and we got our first in Rover. And we lived upstairs. Is that where the store is now in Cannonsburg? That's where the store. When you walk in our front door, that's the first store. Yeah, so that was the start of everything that we were doing. Yeah, and what, it was. I, I'm just thinking, like it, 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 it's funny because, like you know, you think about sort of the the process now. We talk with a lot of people that are new to the business, and you know, they. They've moved from some other business and they're gonna they're gonna go for it, right? And that entrepreneurial spirit, whatever it is, right? I mean, that's your dad, you know, quitting that job. That probably that job that people wanted at RCA was a little bit of a. It was a gutsy move for anybody to do that. Anytime anybody does that, and it just makes you, man, you just gotta say, you know what? He had no choice after that. He had to go out and sell and how, and how many how many you how many brothers and sisters do you have i have one sister that's it 
So, you know. It's still for you, right? I mean, there, there was, there's a lot of responsibility. When was that? 19... My dad started in 1960. So by 1963, I mean, he was doing stuff before 60, but kind of 60s the day. He, right. the, pra the practice was before that. But in general, he opened the store in his basement in 1960. And 63, after a couple of years, built that store, the first store. Did you want to be a part of that business? Initially, no. No, I was going to med school. So, you know, that was the plan. But afterwards, you know, making the decision to say, uh, 20 years from now, I always remember saying that 20 years from now, the medical profession is going to be, uh, and the healthcare system is not going to be that great, and I don't know, and it's going to ruin my golf game. <laughs> so, so let's go in, and that's when we, you know, I came in the business in 70, full-time in 76, and that's when we said, you know what, we're going to go head, we're going to head into fundraising business, and that, yeah. and that's when we started full-time, you know, another, and not, not only in the retail store, but now we had, I call them two things fundraising and our retail store. Yeah. Were your parents disappointed that you went into business or were they, I mean, yes and no. Yes and no. Disappointed that didn't do what, uh, what they thought was, what they thought we should be doing. And, uh, and, uh, but going in there, it was just some, Hey, we're going to go. I was in a sense, just like he was when he got started. Okay, it was focused. This is what we're going to do. And we needed the equipment and we needed to put the programs together. So at that time, there was only two places to get our chocolates, fundraising or in our retail store. Right. And that was, you know, but fundraising is how we ended up really growing our business. That was a big part of it. It was a it was kind of people weren't doing candy like that. There weren't too many people doing right. fundraising like that back then, back then. Times have changed now. You know that it's just like anything else. But that was kind of, that was the start of doing that, and we just kind of kept growing from there. Yeah, I mean, I think I think also one of our first interactions too was like right after you guys acquired Gardner's. Right, we got a we got a trip down to. I don't even know where it is. Tyrone. I, yeah, I still don't know where it is. Tyrone, Tyrone PA. It's by yeah, okay. State College. State College. That's a good, close enough. Penn State. I should know that since, you know, my great-grandmother was a house mother and a frat at, you know, Penn, State, Penn State in the 1920s. But, um, yeah, well, things I should know. But yeah, You'll find your way. I'm still, hey, I'm still a big Benzel's Pretzels fan from Altoona. I know. Did you hear what happened to them? No. Okay. Uh, one of their ovens caught on fire yes, yeah, last night. Wow. So they, had, I, they, had, they had a fire in their facility. Everything's okay. I talked to them. I talked to them this, uh, this morning. He said, everything's fine. All the systems that were in place in case there was a fire worked. So it was put out. One of their ovens caught on fire. So it was put out before... Uh, the fire trucks got there, but there was a lot of smoke. And, you know, with social media, cameras, neighbors, taking pictures and news media and all that stuff. So that's – fires are scary, you know. They are. There's less of them in the chocolate business, though. There's less, <laughs> there's less flame. No, there's less flame, but there's other stuff, just like our fire we had in 2012. Right. You know, it just – you never know. You never know. Things things happen. What do you but, so I'm gonna go back to Frank for a minute. Go ahead. Like somebody by the way, somebody scrolled through and said that he was he was the greatest of all time, by the way. Well, you know, on candy, yeah, he was he's a Tom Brady. <laughs> That's what we call him. he's the Tom Brady of our chocolate. What do you yeah. think the biggest lesson confection wise you got from him? Like not, I mean, life, I mean, he's your dad. Like, I'm not going to even get there. But I mean, like, what do you think, like, in the kitchen was the, was the best thing that you learned from him? Uh, That's a tough question. That might be the hardest question I've asked anybody ever, by the way. Actually, it's not that, it's not that hard of a question. 
you know, what's what, caramel. Caramel. What's the best thing I learned from him in the kitchen was making caramel. Okay. The, the caramel was a process. And at that time, the reason I'm saying that is when you were making caramel like that, and of course, you know, you have your copper kettle and you're cooking and you have cream and you have things, but you have to sit there and stir it continuously, 45 minutes, maybe longer, waiting for temperature. And you got the big wooden paddle and just, you know, I'm doing the hand motion because you know right. what I'm back and forth and back and forth and scraping the sides down and doing that and knowing exactly, you know, it became, you know, there, there weren't, you didn't have gauges on there to tell you, okay, here's the moisture content. Okay. Right. Here's the temperature. It was by sight and you'd reach in there and grab, you know, get cold water and did the soft ball test. Okay, you get a bit of caramel on a teaspoon, you drop it in the water, you know, you firm, you squeeze it, and you know, oh, okay, that's the texture I want. Shut the flame off and pour it on the table. That was a process. I hated it. I hated it because I have no patience to, to stand there and stir like that for 45 minutes drove me nuts. But it's a really good karma. We do the same thing right now, only we have stirs that stir so you don't have to, okay? And you have drip feeders that drip the cream into the batch so you don't have to stand there and pour it by hand. But it's the same caramel, same batch. Yeah. You know, it was funny. I was in, a, I was in an old school confectioner, middle of the state, Pennsylvania, I don't know, 10 years ago. And um, I asked, like, how do you, like, we were talking about their caramel and it was really good and they, they include me in on the recipe and then they're like, let me show you something. And I'm like, okay, show me. And they, they take their number 10 can of evaporated milk, right? <laughs> Takes a nail and punches a nail, he punches into the, into the can, right? And then they yeah. built this system, right? To hold the can of evaporated milk over. Yes. And, and so as, He's still stirring, right? Because they hadn't yeah. invested in a fire mixer with a paddle yet. Right. This it's drip feeding on its own, right? And and I'm like, how do you know you get it right? And he kind of looked at me like, because I've been doing it for 20 years, dumbass, <laughs> you know. But his answer was, you got to use the right size nail. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That's exactly what they did. At one point, we got a uh, a hook and and screwed had a screw in that held the can. And right. did the same thing and poked. Well, at that time, you poked two holes in the bottom. Well, probably you, on the nail and, side. And it would just drip. And the thing was, you needed that thing on top so that the air, so that it would drip out. Otherwise, it did. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how good humans are at finding easy ways to do things. <laughs> I think and what's cool, though, is that you were talking about, you know, a small town with only like – with. 10,000 people and four chocolate makers, right? I think that era of confection, and still to this day, not quite as much, people just shared what they did. Like they weren't, they weren't afraid that somebody was gonna take their business. They wanted to help the next person be better at what they were doing. I mean, I, I don't know if you still see that now, but I mean, that's my impression. Our, gener our generation, my generation, not so much. My dad's generation, and I remember, remember, I'm growing up, I'm, I'm born in 53, so in 60, 63, and I'm 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, and all the candy makers were all friends, and they all used to get together, they'd go on trips together, the, the, you know, the RCI, right. uh, they, they still do it, okay, and there's still probably groups, but at that time, I remember going to another candy, I'll tell them who it was, Pete Bolanis is one, Anderson Candy's the other. How many times we would go over and say, "Hey, we have to run over, we have to run over Andersons and help him make Easter eggs." He got a big order, right? So we would hop in the car and and go. And we did the same thing with Pete Bolanis. He would go over his place, or he would say, "Hey, man, we need you. Come over here and help us out." Very, very friendly group at that time. And then the dust generations come in. You know, as we grew, you don't, I don't say you don't need them, but really 
you don't need them. You have employees now, then there's jobs and there's things like that. So that camaraderie was there. But we're still, hey, our, uh, my, my mother and our, our kids are godmothers and godparents to the other candy companies. So right. we're still socially friendly. I just talked to, uh, uh, you know, Pete Sudis. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just talked to Pete this morning. Okay. His dad was Penhurst, worked for Clark for a long time in Pittsburgh, and then went on his own. Penhurst right. Candies. Still, talk, you know, just you know, pick up the phone. Just like we're talking now, we have that right. conversation. What's going on? What business can you have? Or I know somebody that needs your services. And he right. says, hey, I have a couple people. I, so, you know, it's, there's not a, it's, it's not a, a competition so much in certain things because we've become, candy have become experts in specific fields. Okay. Uh, how, and can I say that where they're doing, you know, different types of bulk on protein bars. Right. Okay. okay. So these guys are specialized in protein bars or there's other people just making candy bars like Chris Candies in Pittsburgh that just runs bars. Um, right. So, you know, we're still very friendly and talk. You know, just like you and I share recipes and stuff. Somebody wants to know. I mean, come on, it's the you can get a candy book because all the recipes are in there. It's not some big, huge secret what the hell we're doing. Yeah, I used to work for a chef like that. They said if somebody wants a recipe, give it to them. They still got to make it. You know what? You can put all the ingredients in front of two people with the directions, and they're going to sit there and do it, and they're, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to taste the same. There's some expertise involved it's like making caramel you're not going that first time and making that batch and you're not it's it's a learning process yeah what, and, that, and i think and it's just, we're, it's, you were talking about the story about your dad and caramel i mean i think it's what do they say you need to do something for ten thousand hours until you're an expert you know you got to do it at least twice there's there's definitely something especially something you know, something involved like that that takes a certain tech. It's technique is what it is. Experience and technique in in doing something. Yeah. Because I mean, just like chefs, they teach them. They teach their cooks ex the recipe exactly. And they duplicate it. And they do that. That's what good restaurants do. You know, and that's what we do here. You know, we have different people here learning all the time how to run equipment, how to help in the kitchens. So... Yeah, but you also, I mean, your customers, like you have customers that have been Sarah's customers for 50 years, right? I mean, that if something's different, they know it, right? They, like they walk in the door totally. like, hey, what did you change? Absolutely. You know, it's just like chocolate too. You know, the beans aren't the same all the time. Right. There's always slight variances in these batches when you're making chocolate. The little light color, uh, a little flavor, something there's, and it's surprising when somebody eats that piece of chocolate, they may say, did you do something different? <laughs> or they'll go, is that a different pretzel? <laughs> There's something different about this. Our cut, your customers, they know. Right. And I talked about pretzels earlier, right? You just brought them up again. Well, I think I'm talking about pretzels more today than I have in a long time. And I'll, I'll go toe to toe with anybody and say, this is the best chocolate covered pretzel ever. Right. Thank you. And, and, I know there's some secrets involved in that, and I'm not asking you to give away secrets, but a good pretzel, a good chocolate, and a good technique, right? I mean, right. Yeah, the chocolate has to be right. And the pretzel, that, that pretzel is our specifically made for us. And right. there's, a couple, there's a couple little things there that make it a little bit different than sitting there having a... And that pretzel, really, sometimes when you think about it, is not as good as a regular pretzel without the chocolate on it. I haven't, I'm, no, I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm skirting the line. I don't want to give away some of the stuff I happen to know because we know each other. But, yeah, this pretzel wouldn't be as good if it wasn't covered in, in milk chocolate. It just wouldn't yeah, be as good. It, it's made for that. And it wouldn't That's be as good in dark chocolate either. Uh, if you like dark chocolate, yeah, it's fine. But, I mean, I, I think it's, it's a different... It's a different experience. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Like yes. I think, I mean that's that's pretzel is made for milk chocolate. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. That press is made for milk chocolate. Yeah. Even though we do coat it in dark, we do coat it in white, we right. do do that, but it's really, that's what it's for. Yeah. So of all the items you're making these days, what's your favorite? Oh boy. Okay. If I'm going to, if I have a go-to, I'm going to, if I'm walking right now, I'm going to go have a peanut butter cup. That's my go-to. Peanut butter cup and a coffee. That's like a perfect lunch. That's like, I'll tell two you that peanut, that's... Two peanut butter cups and a coffee. Whenever I'm down that way and I don't bring back a box of Sarah's peanut butter cups or peanut butter, I get in trouble from the house. Like, Christine is like, you didn't bring back... Why Why'd you go? You went all the way to Pittsburgh and you didn't bring back any Sarah's peanut butter cups? I'm like, sorry. I brought yeah. pretzels. Yeah, pretzels for you. <laughs> so... I mean, are you guys adding new stuff all the time, though? I mean, are you, I mean, obviously, I just said you're generational. There's some stuff that has to be in the case. But are you, like, looking for new items and putting new things in the case from time to time? You know, it's, yes, yes, and yes. Occasionally, you know, we'll look at some things. But our customers, our customers like their piece. If they're going to have chocolate, just like I said, if I'm going to go have a piece of chocolate, I'm going to have a peanut butter cup. Well, there are people, your customers are passionate about their particular candy, whether it be a coconut cluster, whether it be a, uh, a vanilla cream, whether it be a mint patty, a, a peanut butter melt away. They come in here for their favorite thing. They're not going to waste their calories or whatever they want on something that's like, nah, I don't know, that looks good, but I'm not going to try that. I want my, I want my candy. I came for my candy. So... You know, do we do some things? Yeah, we do some things. Different uh, almond butter, for example, that's a good good one. You know, everybody's a little healthier almond butter, things like that. Nah, if you're gonna have peanut butter, I'll stick with the peanut butter. I don't need the almond butter. But uh, yeah, we're doing. We're just making more of what we already make, and you know, and growing. You know, we've got. We've got a big expansion coming up that's not out in the market, so I'll tell you first. Well, yeah, and, and only like 30 other people. They won't, yeah. you know, we don't Yeah, know. whoever, yeah, whoever's here now. I just, remind, but, just when I come, when I come for that, by the way, because I think I'm on the, I'm on this, I'm on the docket. Don't let me forget to take home peanut butter cups because Christina will never speak to me again I, if I spend I a week with you. I, if I'd have known that, I was, I'd have brought him yesterday. I think. Hey, speak with So Bill, Bill was up, in, up here the other day. And like, I go to our sales guys, like tell Bill like to say hi to me. And Mike's like, yeah, Brian wants to say hi. And Bill's goes, no, 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 he's with a customer. I can't interrupt. Bill, you can always interrupt me when I'm with whoever. Well, that's okay. You're a priority for me all the time. Well, thanks. But we made, how about that quick trip? We left at six, got there about 9.30, did our thing at Tom Rick. Then we went over to the other, um, what do you call it? CD. CDS. CDS, okay, went over there. Everybody was early, grabbed some lunch, and then we were back at back at the office at four. So just a perfect quick trip and got everything done. So, but yeah, I did. I wanted them to see the uh, the lines that are up there and, and do that. We're excited about the new piece coming in. We're excited about coming down to help. Yeah, I can't wait. I really that, can't. Where's it? Am I, where am I going? Am I going to Cannonsburg or am I going yeah, to Yeah, you're coming to Cannonsburg. We're squeezing it in somewhere until we make the move. So we'll see what happens. Are there hotels in Cannonsburg or do I have to like... Yeah, you have else? a ton of hotels in Cannonsburg. Yeah, there's South, it's called South Point. There's, uh, they've, they've built brand new hotels for the uh, gas and oil people. All right, so, I'm just making sure. I just, I didn't know I had to sleep in the car. Beautiful brand new hotels, no problem. Right on the golf course there. Nice little plaza for lunches so, or dinner. I, I was going to ask you what's next for, for the Sarah's Candies world, but you kind of gave it away. You're doing an expansion. Are, is the goal yeah. just to make more, or is the goal really to do new stuff? A little of both. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's both. You're expanding, okay? We want to move our production facility into a new building with all the new FDA standards and things like that and SQF. So, you know, the plan is to move all the production into one facility. We want to build it, uh, 
the building's already up, so it's going to be an internal build, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring in, be convenient for tours and things like that where people can look and look and not touch in one sense, okay, where they're allowed to come in there. But uh, 2023 is the date. That September 1, 2023 is the opening day. And only because you've already told everybody how old you were. <laughs> yeah, okay. Earlier, you kind of, you, gave, you left that kind of in the bag. I mean, you're at a point in your life where most people would be kind of like throttling down a little bit, right? I mean, you, but, you're not. No. I, you know what? I'm, I'm crazy. <laughs> it's the craziest move. But you know what? You're, there's opportunity there. And you know what? We don't look like, you know, we're not going to stop. Uh, there's opportunity for everybody. You're coming to our, you know, Cannonsburg over here. We didn't leave uh, jobs. Uh, and again, I said, it's opportunity. We're growing. There's business out there. Our brand, our brand is um, growing. You know, if you're doing, you know, the, if you're doing anything in any business, no matter what, you know, you say, is there a secret? Yeah, build your brand. If there's a secret, build your brand. Okay, don't go out and you don't need to do anything else. It's branding. Brand yourself and uh, it brings people out. It brings people on board. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Is there a secret? <laughs> I don't know. We work. We work. I, well, I don't know. Yeah, I got to ask that question one time about like what, how are you where you are when you're here? Whatever that means. And my response was I put my head down and I went to work every day. I mean, that's right? what I did. I, when I got out, you know, I'm out of college over there and just get married and, you know, we're having kids and I'm, I'm leaving at five in the morning and coming to work. And then I'd run home and have dinner between five and six. And then I'd go back to work and I'd get home at 10 o'clock at night. And then to do that, and I did that for years, you know, and I, you know, you, I, honestly, I missed my kids growing up doing you know working here but that's what we did they didn't know any difference i didn't know i thought that's what people did because that's what my parents did that's what my grandfather did they worked you up in the morning you go to work you're there you go back you work again so that was that's what i called i thought was normal right <laughs> and but, now but, I, but, so but there's been really some definite <laughs> but but there's been some payoff for that right i mean I, you know there, yeah, Sarah's candies. Sarah's candies in the big picture has done well. Is that a fair way of putting it? Yes, but yes, but you know, but, and it said it's hard, hard work and a lot of stuff that I, I missed a lot of stuff with the kids. Okay, that so now and now I'm doing it with the grandkids because I don't follow that schedule anymore. Okay, and that's you know, but I'm you know. I'm way, way past the time where I can go sit there and, you know, run laps with the kids and things like that. But, you know, it's but your, kid, now, but your kid, But your kids are involved in the business now. They are. They are. Yep. So, yeah. But they're, you know, not, not as involved as I am. Right. But, you know, on the marketing end and things like that, yes. Okay. They have a prettier face than I do. So normally I don't, you know... I, if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't you, I would have her on there because she looks a lot better than I do on camera. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted you here. I wanted you I to am tell here. Story. I told I you. Know. I was. I told you. I said. I promise you, I'll do it. Okay. So hey, because somebody's asking on the scroll, you're leaving the retail and the ice cream shop right where it is. Right where it is. Yeah. Yeah. You're just moving Nothing production moving in here. It. It's just strictly production back. We're so cramped for production. You were crafted you know years ago. And I know. And we and we need to be more efficient in what we're doing and convenience and have yeah. it's more convenient for our employees to do their job and not be all squished together or, or whatever and have more room to to function. Right. But I mean but you mentioned it earlier, SQF, FDA, it's become a lot harder to run our businesses these days. I, for good reason or not good reason, I won't even get into that debate. But yeah. it's definitely harder to run our businesses now. It, it requires it requires a little more. You know, and sometimes I think 
even for your the people that work here, your teams, it's nice to have these so-called FDA inspectors, uh, the people that come in and go look and say, hey, you're doing that wrong. You know, you're not supposed to do that. You can't do that. This is what we're doing because it lets your employees know that they are doing a great job because these people come in and go, wow, okay, that's great. You're doing that right. Wow, that's good. That's really good. Okay, okay. And you go, wow, but you know, that's – so I like it when they come in. It's reinforcement positive. And, hey, you know what? There's always like a, a skid in the wrong place, you know, a bag – you know, a, a bag of sugar that's spilled a little bit, okay, and they say, okay, let's write that up. But that's okay. But it's reinforcement, and I, I really do like it, even though it's very – it's getting strict, more strict. Yeah. It's the frayed towel that I always got zinged on. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's there's a string hanging from that towel. Like, okay, you're right. I'll, yeah. I'll throw it out. Can we – Yeah, why is why that towel hanging in your back pocket, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's interesting. It's a business has changed as far the candy business is different. You've got a lot of, you've got a lot of people coming in now with, what do you want to call it? Sugar-free, vegan, uh, all the new so-called health bars. Right. You know, that aren't as health. Sometimes you're better off just eating a piece of chocolate with three ingredients than you are reading the package. Yeah. So I was talking to a mutual friend of ours yesterday and she shall remain nameless, but yeah, she has I, three, you know, the three initial woman I'm talking about. Okay. And she, she's, she was talking about, she's working on a project and she's like, I'm using banana flour. I'm like, banana flour. What's banana flour. And she's like, I think they take a banana, they grind it up and they dry it. I'm like, Oh, why? And she's like, because it's all the rage in, in, in these nutritional granola things. I'm like, cool. Yeah. Ah. Banana flour, tapi first it's almond flour, and then it's tapioca powder. Now it's not banana flour. Apparently That's, it's the peels and everything. It's the whole banana. Then they just chuck it in the machine. Well, at, and least you don't wait, at least you're not wasting the banana and throwing the peels out. It's a good thing. Finding a use for it. I saw somebody on line making banana bacon. Taking the peels and making banana bacon. Why don't you just eat bacon? I think I bacon know. is like, like bacon's like one of those perfect food groups. Yeah, chocolate and bacon's good too. So, yeah. all right, because I asked this question to everybody. Okay. You're, you know, you I don't know, you, you stop at the local sheets to pick up a bag of ice for the party you're going to. I don't know. I'm making up a story. And you're on the way back from the ice machine, you're in the, in the mass market candy aisle. You can pick one item. What do you buy? Well, you, since you said sheets. It's, okay. I, okay, it can't be a Sarah's item. It's, it's not. It's a, gardener, it's a gardener's item. <laughs> it's a gardener's peanut butter melt away. But no, if I'm in sheets... And I'm not buying my own chocolate. Now, you know what I'm buying. I'm a buying a peanut butter cup. Reese's peanut butter cup. Yeah, that's, a, that's my go-to. So, but yeah, now Gardner's is next to Pete Reese's peanut butter cup and sheets. How about that? That's impressive. The, as the empire grows further. Yeah, it's just uh, a little bit of, little, a lot of work, a little bit of luck, you know. Good salespeople. Yeah, it's sounds like a lot of work. I mean, you know, I mean, I think, you know, I think you guys do a lot of. I mean, look, we're friends, and I'm not trying to blow smoke up your, you know what. But I mean, you guys make great product too. Like, I think that's where it all starts. If you don't make great product, the rest of it doesn't really matter. You know what? It's, that's that's the most important thing that you're doing, and that's your brand. Great product is your brand, but there's a lot of things out there that aren't that great, but they have a great brand. But yeah, for us in the can, when you're when you have food, it better be good, and that's you know we're we're a food group, so yeah, and it better and and we do our best to make sure everything you know everything that we buy for an ingredient is what it's supposed to be. And I'm you know how many ingredients are there? If we're buying 
cashews. You know, we want the big, big, biggest whole cashews we can get. You know, the California almonds, Georgia pecans. Okay, right. I, you know, there's certain things. There's Indian cashews, and then there's Brazilian cashews. You want Brazilian cashews. They're sweeter. They taste better. Okay, so these are the things that you sit there and you learn and you continue to do. Where in the world has chocolate taken you to that you never thought you would go? How's that for a crazy question? Like, yeah. I'm asking you, like, hard questions today. Yeah. I'm asking you, like, real, like, interview-style questions. Yeah, where did it take me? Uh, well, at the time, at the time, you know, Germany was probably somewhere I never thought I'd go, to Interpac, and, of course, that was how old am I again? You know, that was uh, 30, 30 years ago to go out and go see things like that, but it took me there all over Europe. Uh, and we had a great weekend together in, in Rimini. Yeah. Yeah. It was cold. It's an ice cream show when the weather's the worst part of the weather when you're going, because that's, they don't want you there when the beach was open. Right. But yeah, that was a great show too. That I enjoyed, I miss doing that. There's so, you learn so much what other people are doing. You know, you take your, you get your blinders taken off because mm -hmm. you're out there and, and you get to see things and touch, feel, taste. Yeah, I actually, I got to go to Rimini, what year is it? I don't, last February, so 2020, like right before, that was my, one of my last trips prior to COVID. And yeah, I mean, you're in a, you're in a space with 200,000 other people talking about gelato and chocolate. Right, that's all but anybody wanted to talk about. But they're all over the country, and some of the stuff you don't under, you can't understand because you don't oh, speak yeah. their language. And you know, and you as you learn how to do some some really nice sign language when you're there. I, I don't know. I just ate a lot of pistachio gelato. That was like my goal was to like spend time with Selmy in the Selmy booth and eat pistachio gelato. That's pretty much all I did for. It's amazing days. how when you go to shows like that, how you can eat your way around the aisles. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you may not know this. I have a rule that I don't eat at trade shows. Like I just don't that like it's it's a quirky sanitation thing. But at that show, <laughs> I ate enough gelato in four days to probably fill most people up for the year. But anyway. no, no, I, I miss but, those. So ice cream, ice cream is a huge part of what you guys do now too, right? I mean that. When did that happen? Mm somebody's going to correct me, I think, but it's probably like 83, 4, or 5. There was a, my dad, you know, the old-fashioned candy store, soda fountain thing back then was like the big thing. All the kids would go and go to the soda fountain or the candy store, so he wanted to do ice cream. So we happened to be a farmer down the road, and it was Mick Reith was the farm. Mr. McReef, and uh, I had gone in there and said, hey, you know what, we're interested in making ice cream. Do you have, you know anything, or can you, you know, tell us about, about the cream and all that? And he looked at me and he goes, son, I've been waiting 65 years for somebody to come and ask me that. And he goes back and he pulls a folder out with all recipes, and he hands it to me and says, here you go. This is all you need. And boy, they were all handwritten, you know, fresh cream, fresh, you know. Again, I always say, it's not that much. Okay, it's not that. It's easy. You know, fresh cream, sugar, you know, some inclusions, and you got ice cream. <laughs> Would you buy the ice cream machine and do that? But yeah, so we did that, and uh, ice cream's been crazy for us here busy busy when this covid thing hit you know and then then it came back out and people can sit outside so now we have see outside seating a few inside but right. yeah it's been a big part of entertaining you know, it's, it's entertaining we make good ice cream they're huge you know huge servings it's fun ice cream makes you smile it's a little glass of water the whole uh, yeah yeah definitely water you don't want to <laughs> eat anything else with ice cream <laughs> it's a little glass, you know, and not even ice water, just fountain, just right out of the fountain. 
Well, you, you know, up here, up here, the, the, the place that I think about like that is Antoinette's. Yes. Right. And I don't know, I guess, you know, that Peter passed recently. Yeah. And yeah. so a toast to Peter Morphis, who I think is the same, has a similar story in a lot of ways to you guys. I mean, his dad started the business and, but yeah, there's nothing better than that freshly spun chocolate yeah. milkshake on a, on a hot summer night that you know. doesn't go through the straw. And it, yeah, that's it. It's just, a, you have to turn it upside down. If it spills out, it's not thick enough. So that's a milkshake. Bill taught me a couple things about making a milkshake at home. One is you cut it with a knife. You don't try to stir it with a spoon because it doesn't, it's not right. And so that's something that's been instituted in our house. Mm -hmm. Also, if memory serves me, you use hot fudge in a milkshake when you want you the chocolate milkshake. You use hot milkshake. fudge, but the, the best milkshake is with 2% milk. Even though we don't use 2% milk in the ice cream parlor, we use whole milk. But if you're at home, 2% milk, ice cream, and a butter knife, and that's just, you chop the milkshake, you don't stir it. Because you get those little pieces of ice. That's what makes it, yeah, because it's 2% milk. Giving away all the secrets for home ice well, cream. Well, that that's a home, a home thing, but. It is, it's a home thing, and it's, that, that's perfect. I'm a malt guy, though, too, a malt, extra malt. Well, you know what, different parts of the country, different areas, nobody, malt here is like, only person that asks for malt is somebody that would be coming from Buffalo that comes down and go, hey, well, do you that's have a malt? Philly, that's it's that's a, not even a Philly thing. That's yeah. like, I, went, I worked in an ice cream shop in college, a custard place that we had malts. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. This is great. Yeah. Yep. So that's just like you're up there. You have sponge candy, Buffalo sponge candy. We, we, we couldn't sell a piece of sponge candy here. It just, yeah. everybody turns up their nose. They make a face. Are they are they Jimmy's or Sprinkles in in Cannonsburg? Jimmy's. That's a Pennsylvania yeah. thing because yeah. I'm a Jimmy's guy too. Jimmy's. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why. I, when somebody says Sprinkles, I don't know what they mean. <laughs> I say Jimmy's up here. People look at me. Do you want what? I'm like, yeah. sorry, chocolate sprinkles. Yeah. My apologies. Yeah. yeah. I'll translate. I like Jimmy's. Well, I the, the distinction is, and I always say Jimmy. I say Jimmy's because Jimmy's are like real chocolate or things like that uh, sprinkles are everything else if it's real That's if it's true. real it's yeah if it's real it's jimmy's i don't know i don't know that's just me <laughs> i don't know they're all jimmy's as far as i'm concerned that, yeah yeah i think yeah. non-perel seats are jimmy's in my world growing up you it know, took they're me all, they're jimmy's took me 40 years to spell non perels I still can't spell it. And, spell, and the autocorrect can't fix it. And don't like it just looks at you like, I do not know that word. And don't ask me to spell it right now. I can write it, but I can't spell it out loud. P-A-R-R-I-L-L-E? I don't know. P. I don't know. But and it's one it's got word. It's an E and L. It's, it's, it's one it's, word, too. It's not two words. It's one word. Yeah. You guys think a lot of word. those, too, don't you? <laughs> yeah. What's confusing yeah. about them is the nonpareils are the seed, and they're the confection. Correct. Yeah. Who thought of that? <laughs> and then, you know what? And I think about it. You've got a really nice creamy chocolate. And then you got these seeds that ruins the creamy chocolate that you're sitting there crunching. I don't get that. I don't get it. And we sell a lot of them, but it just, I don't get it. What's there? There's a movie theater candy with them. And I don't even know what they are. Like, the, the, uh, Yeah, there is. Oh, oh well, man! Doesn't matter. Snowflakes, snow, snowflakes. Is that what they're calling? I don't know. I eat, I eat gummy bears in the movie theater, so I'm not the right guy to ask. And a Kit yeah, Kat bar. Snowflakes. So. Okay. All right. Um, but <laughs> it's a Friday afternoon. You probably have something to do. Get back to work. Um, Bill, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me. It was fun. It snow was caps. Fun. They're called snow caps. Snow caps. That's it. Somebody, somebody snuck in there, huh? Snow caps. I was close. So, you were close. You were closer than I was. Snowflakes. Snow caps. Yeah. But either way, I, I, I honestly thank you, Bill. This has been a pleasure. It's nice hearing the story from the man. It always is. It's fun. Anytime. I'll talk to you. I might need you for something pretty soon. You're, when in doubt, I call Bill Sarah. He'll know. But I, I, I think we're going to be down there soon. I think 
Yeah, Stuff we might are. Be, I might hope be so. on the water. Yeah, boats coming in. Instead of saying the check's in the mail, we got to say the boat's coming in. So then All the right. check will be in the mail. So anyway, okay. Bill, Bill, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.